This is TPC Texas Algebra 1 2024 Practice Set 5. This is the fifth in a series of five practice sets, and you can get your free copy of five practice problems uh, at my store, Secondary Math Assessment Resources on Teacher Pay Teacher. This resource is free for today, uh, the 5th of February, and it will continue to be free through next week. Uh, so on the 12th, it'll be a paid item. So if you want to get your free copy, go ahead and head over there now and download it. We'll be looking at some items that are like the ones in this practice set during this video. Now, once you've downloaded your copy of your practice set, it's going to look something like this. Uh, go ahead and scroll through the practice set and you'll see five uh, items and then there's an answer key for those five items with the TEKS alignment. These are the Texas standards. And then at the very end is a table that we're going to use uh, in this assignment, in this activity. On the left side of the uh, table, you'll see the item numbers for the items in this practice set. But the ones we're going to be working today are actually star items from the actual released 2022 exam. And the items we'll do are 41, 43, 44, 46, and 50. Uh, we will be using the Texas version of the Desmos graphing calculator. And you can get help uh, with these skills that I'm going to be showing in this video uh, by uh, watching this video and the other videos that are in this series. Uh, click on the link here at the bottom to get to my YouTube channel. And I would suggest that you go ahead and subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. And I'm going to give you a teaser here. There is, I'm going to be working on a pretty big exam for, for the next release. So around Monday of next week, start looking. Um, and I'll probably put out a little quick video to explain what's in that assessment. So if you're looking for another test, um, this is the place to be. Uh, so go ahead and click on this link, which is Texas Star Algebra 1 Spring 2022, and that will take you out to the actual release test that we're going to be working next. When you get to the test, it'll look something like this. Uh, this is the last paper test that is administered by Texas. All of their assessments will be digital from here forward. But many of the items you'll see in this assessment will mirror the things that you're going to see even in the online version of the test. So uh, these are good items to practice with your kids uh, to prepare them for the state test. The first item we're going to look at is item number 41 on page 39. And this is a geometric sequence. And we're going to use the Desmos graphing calculator to help us discover or determine which of these four equations best models this sequence. To do that, we're going to use uh, go to desmos.com and get the testing version of their calculator. When you go to desmos.com, you'll go to Math Tools here at the top. Choose Test Practice. At the top, choose your assessment and scroll down to Texas Star and start practice. This is the graphing calculator that was used on all of the items in all five practice sets. So in this first item, we have a sequence. Uh, now this does require your kids to know quite a bit about sequences and the notation and how to uh, interpret this. So if you are using the subscript notation for your sequences, it's really important to also know that that is a function as well. So a subscript n can be written a as a function of n. So that's exactly how we're going to approach this item. If you'll click on the uh, um, table, what we're going to do is we're going to create plus and then add table and we're going to put in um, one, two, three, four, five, let's see how many terms they gave us. One, two, three, four, five, six. They gave us, they gave us six terms. So we're going to do one through six. The domain for a function is always that 
you know, the terms of the sequence. So the first six terms in this case. So what we're going to do is type in the first answer choice. I'm going to call it A of N, just like that. So the notation is different. This would be something you would have to tell your students so that they would know it. Now the students should know this is exponential, so maybe they would not even try to do this one, but that's okay if they don't know, because what we're going to do is we're going to take this Y1, and we're going to put A, and we're going to put X1, well, if I can get it in here, X1, in parentheses. And what that's doing is it's putting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 into this function and evaluating to give us the terms of the sequence. And you'll notice the first term is correct, but none of the rest are correct. So that means answer choice A is not correct. So the second term, or the second equation that's provided, I guess I should just back up here. All right, shift six will create an exponent, and we're gonna put an exponent of n. And so if you look at this uh, expression, you'll see that the graph is over there to the right, but they don't need it. Notice that the values in this table are exactly the same as the terms of the sequence under the function a of x1. So the correct answer in this case is answer choice b. The next item we're looking at is item 43. It's on the same page, page 39. So to do this problem, we're given an expression. This is just the difference of two squares. And we're looking for an equivalent expression that's in factored form. So to do these problems, one way to do them is to create a function. So I'm going to call this f of m. And then I'm going to type in the original expression, 3m squared minus 100. This way students don't have to change the variable m to x and then, you know, worry about messing it up. Use the same variable and just call it a function of m. Uh, they can barely see this graph, uh, but this probably is going to work, so I'm just going to leave that alone and go ahead and type in the first answer choice. You can type f of m again, but to make it different, let's use a different letter. Let's call this one g of m. And we'll type in the product of two binomials, 9m minus 20 and 4m plus 5. Uh, you'll notice the blue graph and the red graph do not coincide, so that's telling you that this expression is not equivalent. If they were equivalent, it would produce the same graph. So let's go to answer choice B. This one has a 4 in the front, and in the first set of parentheses, it has 3m minus 5. And in the second set, it has 3m plus 5. And again, this is a perfect fit. If you turn off the blue graph, you will see the red graph is under it and it's completely covering it. So the correct answer choice is B. The next item is item number 44 and it is on page 40. Here we have a table of data and we are asked to find a function that models the data. All of these functions are exponential and you are told in the instructions that you are using an exponential model. So go ahead and click on the plus sign and we're going to recreate this table by typing in these values here. Once these are typed in, we're going to use our, uh, our settings over here to adjust our graph to fit this data. Notice the x values go from 3 to 24, so I need something smaller than 3 and larger than 24. And I can use a step of whatever, I think I'll use 5. The y values in this case start at 274 and go up to over 1500, so I'm going to start at 200 and go to 600. Excuse me, not 600, 1600. And let's see if we can count by 200. You can turn off minor grid lines if you want to. Uh, now you should be able to see the data on the screen, and here it is. So the question is, which model 
best fits these data. One other thing I forgot to point out is you notice they put commas in these numbers, but you really don't want your kids putting commas in their numbers. So uh, I would suggest telling them that and reminding them. They'll know anyway because it'll it gives them an error message if they attempt to type all that. So I'm going to type in this first answer choice just as it appears. And then I'm going to see if this one works. Now this one is growth. And there are actually three of these answer choices are growth. Uh, but I don't even see this one on the page for some reason. So I don't know. Let's zoom out. There it is. Oops. It would help if I put the exponent. So do shift six and put your exponent. Now that model looks pretty good. It's not, of course, hitting every point, but it is close. So I'm going to leave that one and then I'm going to go ahead and copy it like this. You can do control C to copy, control V to paste. So I don't have to retype it. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and do the second one, which is definitely not going to work. <laughs> Notice they just switched the numbers. So I, maybe I'll skip this one. Let's see if they can even see this one. Two, two, three. 0.06. Yeah, that one's way off. This blue one is not correct. So the third one is also grossly incorrect. That was kind of nice of them to give us such uh, lousy distractors. Okay, that one I can't even see it because it's way up at 2000. I don't know if it's really necessary for us to go all the way up to 2000. Oh my goodness, where is it? Two, two, three, two. Oh, I need a period there. There it is. Yeah, that's a decay one. And then J, it, that's crazy. It starts at 0 0.92 and it's growing at a rate of, I don't know, way over 2,000%. Anyway, the only answer choice that makes any sense at all that fits these data would be answer choice F. The next problem we're looking at is number 46 on page 42. Uh, this problem is again a fact uh, trinomial, a polynomial, and then you're looking for the factored form. So just like before, we're going to type in the original equation. And then we're going to type in the answer choices and look for an equivalent graph. So we'll know that that is the correct expression because equivalent equations or functions will produce. By the way, you don't need the k of x. You might wonder why I skipped that, but I'll go ahead and put it. Uh, because it's got an x, it will automatically graph a function of x. It's when you have other letters that it doesn't, so I just get my kids in the habit of using a function of m or function of n if the variable's not an x. Uh, this one is definitely not the same because uh, these graphs are not equivalent, the purple and the green. So answer choice G has an x plus 1 and an x minus 15, and that one is also not the same. Answer choice H is x plus 5, x minus 3. And that one is the same. You may say, well, how do you know? Well, if you un turn this off, you'll see the green is right under it. So they are basically the same graph. So the two expressions represent the same function, equivalent function. The correct answer was answer choice H. The next item is number 50, and it is on page 46. Uh, on this graph, we already have two parabolas, uh, and we are looking for an equation of parabola, the one labeled Q. Uh, your students probably should know that the parabola P is the parent function, y is equal to x squared, but they honestly don't have to know that to do this problem. So I'm simply going to graph each of these answer choices and look for the answer choice that looks like the graph of Q. So let's start with Q of X equals negative and then X minus two shift six and then squared. All right, so this answer choice 
is not going to work because the vertex is here on the x-axis at 2, 0, and we'll, we see the vertex is at 0, 2 on the actual test. So let's try answer choice G, and it's wrong too for the same reason. The vertex will be on the x-axis, not at 0, uh, where it's supposed to be at 0, 2. It'll be at negative 2, 0. So that one does not work either. So let's go ahead and try answer choice H. Let's see, negative x squared minus 2. We'll notice the vertex is moved down 2, and it's supposed to be moved up 2. So the correct answer choice was j. q of x equals negative x squared plus 2. If you haven't already done it, head over to Secondary Math Assessment Resources on Teacher Pay Teacher to get your free copy of your practice set five, and you'll find that right here on the front page. It is a featured item. I now have the practice set bundle available, and in the bundle, you get all five of the practice sets that, that are in this series. Test Prep Central, Texas Algebra 1 2024. Each of the sets has, or each practice set has five items that are aligned to the TEKS and an accompanying video to show you how to work those items using the Texas version of the Desmos graphing calculator. It's been a pleasure working on this practice set with you. If you have a comment or question, be sure to leave it and I will get back to you right away. And don't forget, next Monday, be on the lookout for something new. Y'all have a great day.